Oh, hello and welcome back to the simple shoe making project. So I've made another upper, so I've got my two uppers now and um, need to think about the soles and the heels because at the moment it's just a sheet of leather, a thin sheet of leather holding the upper. Now there are various ways you can approach this. My initial thoughts were I would get one of these sole units. You can buy these ready-made sole units. So for example, in the UK, leather and grindery. That's leather and grindery sell these. And my sort of thought was, well, I could just stick one on. Now, I'm a nine and a half shoe. I bought the nine and a half slash 10 sole units, but actually they're gonna to be too short for this because of the way I've constructed this shoe. And I think it's probably quite a long last as well. So that isn't going to completely work. Obviously, neither is the original sole unit that I took off one of the other shoes. So I need to think again. And this is where the last shapes obviously do vary. So what I thought I would do is I've got some nice soling leather here. I thought I would thicken all of this up and beef it up with a bit of good solid thick it's about four or five millimeter hard soling leather and then probably build up a heel in leather as well and then because I'm not terribly keen on just plain leather soles put a like a stick on sole on so whoops and a stick on rubber heel just so that I've got something to stop the leather getting too slippery but I mean there are other options you can buy individual like heel components so there's one which i could use perhaps and you can also get the the front piece of the sole as well so that's another option all of those would work i think what i'll do at the moment i'll get this thick bit of sole ever glued onto both and then probably review the position okay so first thing i'm going to do is to take these nails out I have also sort of flattened down where I've got stitching joining, so I've actually sort of melted it and hammered it down. Got one of these little files, um, so you could use anything. If you've got a wood rasp file, bit of sandpaper, you don't need one of these. But this is, if you're in the UK, it's a silver line shoe file. They are very, very cheap. Uh, they're not great quality, but they're perfectly adequate for roughing up a bit of leather like this. And it will just help the glue take a bit more, particularly as I think this particular leather has a little bit of surface on it. The other bit of leather, uh, which I've started roughing, hasn't got any surface. But I'll just go over it and just generally rough it without cutting my stitches. So what we'll be doing is covering both surfaces in some Rainier, the powerful one, the Col de Cologne. Um, and yes, it does smell like cologne. I joke, it does smell quite a bit. So, um, it's, but it's a good one. This It's particularly strong. I like to use the Rainier Aquilim, the 315, uh, which I have in my normal glue pot dispenser, which is a sort of eco, nice water-based type glue. And it does most of the gluing jobs for sewing, but where you've got things like soles going on, you're going to want something, I think, with a bit more power to it. And this is the sort of stuff. Not a bad idea to wear some gloves when you're doing this gluing. So I've roughed up both my surfaces. It's also not a bad idea to do a little outline of your shoe so you know roughly where it's going. I've cut this, obviously, quite generously. And what I'll be aiming to do when I come to press the surfaces together is press it down in the waist first and then work back to the heel and work to the front. And like that, if you just do them the back and the front first, you could end up with quite a gap underneath here and it not quite stretching. So do it where it dips in first and you'll get a better join. So I'll get spreading. This comes with a a nice little brush spreader which is quite useful I'll put it on fairly liberally and it sort of semi soaks in as well so I say I may need to apply if it does soak in a lot I'll apply a second coat I'm putting the glue on the flesh side the rough side of the leather 
so I've got the smooth side facing to the ground if you like. Well I've waited about five minutes and the glue really has sunk in so I'm going to give this another coat and again being quite generous with the glue make sure you get up to the edges as well. Should mention very good blog by a guy called Secret Cobbler that I've been finding extremely informative it's someone who has been making shoes I think for about three years something like that now and is turning out some fantastic work but he takes you through his sort of journey and you see him setting out making some shoes uh, it's a blog and um, called Secret Cobbler but I thoroughly recommend you go and have a look at that well worth seeing it's very very helpful sort of guy very nice guy actually right that's gone off tacky now which is what I want just grab that and press it down in that waste area. I'm still just about okay there. Yep. So I'm going to give a few hammer blows. Just get that area in and then coming around and getting it elsewhere. Just giving a final quick visual check to make sure I've got enough leather I'm just about okay there, getting close. <laughs> and I'm going to now spend the next few minutes hammering this down, getting it going really from the center outwards to get rid of any air bubbles. The other thing I will do to make sure I get a good seal at the edges is go around with these pliers and just pinch it. Now, you could use ordinary pliers, you could use mole grips, just line them. I've got these lined with like plastic tape, but you could make little leather sleeves for them, just so you don't mark your leather. If you have one of these old lasts, shoe repair lasts knocking around, you could actually go around and bash your welts like that. So use it as a nice thing. If you have a tool called a welt beater, you could actually use that. But this is not a bad method of making sure you've got a nice bit of closure. So yeah, make sure you've got everything really beaten down around this outer edge. We can do the trimming afterwards. I'm not worried about that. Um, a sharp knife will get that off. It's interesting, if you do get some of this leather and you get some which is particularly hard and you have a bandsaw, you can bandsaw it. It does work, I've tried it. But a sharp knife will also do it. Anyway, rather than drown you out with lots of hammering, I'm gonna spend a few minutes now just hammering this down nice and flat. So I've got both the soles now glued on. I've done a bit of like preliminary trimming with a knife. So I've just gone around these with a knife. Now any knife will do. Because I have one, I am using uh, one of these pull knives, which I find extremely good. You can just take it around the edge and it's curved so it doesn't mark your upper. But it's a drag knife, it's called. But um, you don't need to be using a drag knife. Um, you could just use an ordinary bladed knife and take your time going around. Obviously, mind yourself, you don't obviously get the blade near yourself as you will be applying quite a lot of force. And what I'll then be doing later on is actually just cleaning all of this up. But I've got it roughly off at the moment, all around on each one. So I've left these soles overnight and they've glued very happily. I need to obviously clean all of these edges up. I have decided, looking at my sort of last specification, so I need a, a 22 millimeter heel height and a 15 millimeter toe spring. What I'm going to do is use the logger sole blanks that I have. They actually go on quite well. That roughly shows what it's about. They're a bit clumpy, but I don't think that matters. They'll be good grip and they're a nice sort of rubber. So I'm going to build up the heel with another layer to get to that 22 millimeters. And I've just tried it on the bench. It looks okay. So I'm going to cut out a couple of heel lifts and glue the heel lifts obviously on 
where the heel goes and then that heel piece will go on top. I suggest for cutting these out if you have like a modeler's knife it's not a bad idea any really sort of strong bladed knife will do the job um, and you can just cut them out crudely and trim them on the shoe which might be easier using something like a Stanley knife but obviously cut away from yourself the whole time. If you're also a woodworker and the leather's very tough like this lot, this really is um, toughness six, it's the toughest, you can use a bandsaw. So I'm just sort of roughing up all the surfaces. I'm particularly aware with these um, shoe, you know, heel pieces, etc., that they've got like um, a shiny, almost like coating. I think in the trade they might use a wash off of some sort to clean them up, like a, an alcohol or something. But And also there's a little bit of like um, casting around the sides. So by giving them a file, I'm getting it down to more glueable material and also getting them sort of a bit flatter to make a good nice sticking bond. I'm giving these soles the same sort of treatment. So, and again, I'll glue the leather bit first just because that can be soaking in. And then I can put a bit on the sole. If it's a non-absorbent surface, you probably don't need the second coat so much, but it's where it's soaking in like crazy, there wouldn't be anything to form the bond. It's quite good having the apron on my lap as it does provide some protection from the knife. I wouldn't normally advocate drawing a knife towards yourself, but I'm using a drag knife here. I've got quite good control on it and I'm quite comfortable with that cut but I wouldn't advocate you did that with a standard knife. I obviously use a lot of knives in my woodwork so I sort of get fairly comfortable with knowing what I'm happy or not happy doing. So I'm just putting a few little nails in the heel here so I'm just using my scratch awl to make a little sort of like a mark and then I can pop a nail in. So I've got a little 12 millimeter tacks here. You want to make sure they're sunk down so you could use a punch or you can just use the peening end of your hammer. Same procedure now, I'm just going to stick the heel piece on there. So I've just glued the heel on and I'm just adding a few more little tacks. So again, using Braddle, making a little starting hole and I'm putting the tacks between the treads so that they don't go and scuff a floor. So a little starting hole with a scratch all, pop the tack in and then you can use a, a punch, an ordinary little punch and sink it down. Thirteen more tacks gone onto that heel rubber and I punched them just below the surface. So this is how it's looking at the moment. I've obviously have got to now clean up all around the sides here and a skiving knife will do this very well. So I've got one of the ultra cheap um, ones you can get off eBay, really do not cost much at all. Uh, put a video up about these, how to sharpen them and get them to work well. But you can get a nice, because they're flat, you can get a nice level cut and they will cut the rubber as well as the leather. And you can get a nice finish with one of these. Just take your time, make sure it's nice and sharp. So I've given this all like a sort of knife and a smooth over and I'm just going to pop a bit of dye going around the edge. So it's start to blend it all in. Okay, that's the first lot of dye on, I'll let that dry off. Yeah, so by um, pushing the fibres down, it gets it all nice and shiny and gets it nice and compact. And it's easier to do that when the dye is still on there wet. It sort of slicks everything down better. So the dye has dyed on the edges now and I've just been giving it a little bit of a, like a sandpaper, just rubbing over to try and get it down a bit more. I'm going to use a bit of Yankee Wax. If you don't have a tool for doing this, 
and you can just use a bolt, the head of a bolt, heat it up, touch it on the wax and just rub the head of that bolt, a round head bolt, over here. So again, you don't need a fancy tool to, to, you know, to get the finish on there that you want. So that's a perfectly viable option, just you know, a blow lamp even on a bolt will do it. Just trying to sort of emphasize the whole time, do not, you know, not do something because you don't think you've got the tools. There are plenty of ways out of doing it. So the idea of this is I take the tool, I rub it over the wax. You can see because it's hot, it immediately melts. And I can then work it into the side of the shoe by rubbing it up and down. And that will give a nice little bit of sealing wax. So this shoe wax, it comes in various forms. This one is called Brilliant Wax Yankee Polish and it's by Renier again. So in the UK, the likes of leather and grindery will have it. That's certainly sealed in all my leather little gaps very nicely. So I've now got quite a nice dark edge around there which matches the toe and the heel. So I think that should keep the water out. I'll do the same on the other one and then that will be the the edge is done. That are two uppers made and all nicely sold and all edged all round. So there's not much to do now. Next job will be to take the lasts out, try them for a fit and make some insoles and that will be in the next video. Anyway thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed please do so and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye then.